When I look at the Bible and I, and I look at people in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament and I try to find someone who's a wonderful picture of a servant of the Lord, all right, every time I find someone, there's, I find someone with clay feet. I find someone with weakness. I find someone with, with uh, idiosyncrasies, shortcomings, even sins. And then I look at modern times. I look, I look at all the, the, the heroes of church history, all right? And, and, and they all have clay feet as well. And we look at all the leaders that we have today, all right? Wonderful as they are, all right? There's not a single one who is a perfect servant. So I have to go back to the one perfect servant of the Bible. His name is Jesus Christ. And as we behold him, may we all be transformed from glory to glory, even to the same image of the Lord. Can I have a good amen, church? And for that, we'll go to the four Gospels, but particularly one Gospel, okay, uh, the Gospel of Mark, which is the Gospel of the Servant of Jehovah. Amen. It's all about Jesus being the servant. Now, the Gospel of Matthew, you all know uh, the, the four Gospels portray Christ differently, right? You say, what's the need, Pastor Prince? Well, even, even today, you know, you can have someone who is a famous uh, uh, CEO of a company, but we do not know what he's like as a father, Amen. That part is uh, kept from the press, you know. No one knows about it, okay? So you can write a book of uh, so-and-so as a father or so-and-so as a businessman, so-and-so as a politician, so-and-so as a, a, a social man, all right? So the four faces of Jesus, all right? There's one that says he's an eagle. That's the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John doesn't open with him being born because it is God. The Gospel of John portrays Jesus as God, the Son of God. Jesus Christ came in human flesh. Amen. And that's why it begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Amen. The face of the eagle. Then we have the face of, in the Gospel of Matthew, the face of the lion. Because in Matthew, particularly written to the Jews, all right, he portrays Jesus as the king. And that's why the genealogy of Jesus Christ in Matthew traces him all the way to Abraham, not to the first man, Adam, who wasn't a king, but to Abraham, who was promised kingship. All right? It tells you how Jesus has a double claim on the throne of David. Amen. He's a king, and he's a king of kings in the Gospel of Matthew. Then Mark, which we're going to look at afterwards, is the Gospel of a servant. Okay? But let's go to Luke. And Luke is the Gospel of the man. The face is the face of a man. You have these four faces, all right, uh, in the tabernacle. You know, the, the tabernacle, there's a veil, and you'll see the four faces of the cherubim. Okay, the four faces of the cherubim is also seen in Ezekiel and the book of Revelation. Amen. And the face of uh, first the eagle, then we have the lion, then we have the uh, uh, um, man. Gospel of Luke, you find Jesus in, a, in awesome grace, condescending grace, in beautiful grace. He moves among men. Amen. He lived simply as a man. And that's why in the Gospel of uh, Luke, you have his genealogy that strays all the way to Adam, the first man. Then we have the Gospel we're going to look at today, the Gospel of Mark. And the face of Mark, or the Gospel of Mark is the face of an ox, because an ox is a strong, laborious, all right, strong animal to work, to labor. So let's go real fast to the Gospel of Mark, and we just focus on Mark 1, chapter 1, the first chapter. And it begins like this, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, all right? See how it begins. There's no genealogy in Mark. Why? Because you don't ask the pedigree of a servant. Amen. What is the, the function of a servant? The servant is there to serve. You don't ask, all right? What's your family like? Your, you know, the servant doesn't focus on his pedigree. Amen. We know he's the son of God. Already it begins like this. Jesus Christ, the son of God. The son of God became a servant. How many understand? The son in the house and the servant in the house are two different things. The son don't have uh, uh, to do the things that a servant does. But a servant has no dignity and privileges like the son did, that does. All right? But here, the son became a servant. You see, there is, there is majesty and there is meekness. What a beautiful trait we see in our Lord Jesus. There is majesty and there is meekness. You know, guys, uh, you know, we know that when we, we, we are elated and we, we receive a, a, a promotion or something like that or whatever, we tend to wear our badge, you know, with pride, and, and it's very hard for us to humble ourselves. 
And those who are down, you know, they can be very down. Oh, I'm lousy, I'm this, and I'm blah, 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 and they are really down. Jesus is different. He is majesty and he, there is meekness. It is not this meekness that, that grovel in the dirt. It's a meekness that serves, and yet there's dignity. Amen. Just like that night, um, the Last Supper, it was customary for the servant of the house to take a basin of water to wash all the feet of the guests in, in, in Judea, it gets very dusty, all right? And by the time evening time, their feet is all dusty. So before they enter, uh, they, they enter in a, a certain place, and uh, it's the job of the slave to wash their feet. But I guess they look at one another. Peter says, don't look at me, I'm the oldest, all right? Then somebody else says, you know, I did it the last time, okay? Then uh, Thomas says, I doubt it's me. And Judas probably says, all the monies in the world cannot get me to do this. <laughs> After some time, Jesus stood up. They missed the opportunity. They missed it. And then he got up. The Bible says he removed his, his uh, outer garments, took the girdle of a servant, or of a slave, literally. He stooped down, and they were all stunned. And the Bible says, Jesus, knowing that he has been given all things, that he's going, he came from the Father, he's going to the Father, set aside his garments, took a basin, and washed their feet. I love the way the Bible says it. In other words, only people who know they have everything, who is something in God, can afford to stoop down and serve. 